Good morning, uh, everybody. Um, welcome to our session. We decided to call it a physics connect to value. Today, um, I'm joined by my colleagues, Alexandra Pinto and also uh, Mar Duran. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Um, as a specific topic from today, I uh, decided to broad um, roof penetrations. So we all aware about roof penetration, how it can be a problem on site. And we today we're just gonna go through a couple examples, see um, how we can come over this type of situation. We have various and uh, different types of situation found on site. And in the end, um, explain it a little bit about our physical solution and how we can solve this type of situations. Uh, yeah, hoof penetrations, if you see here, uh, this is, is really common in the UK region. Uh, when you see this type of asphalt tiles or uh, this type of membrane. Uh, the thing is, the common solutions or we will see in the market, as we see here in the right picture, is try to come up with this type of pitch pocket um, ceiling which is, if it's done properly, it could be a great solution. Although, uh, what we see over time, uh, this type of solution, uh, they shrink. So once they shrink, uh, the water will come through the hole or that penetration, and we'll have eventually a leak uh, on the roof, sorry. Um, here are some more couple examples. Uh, we see this type of um, single ply membrane or bituminous membrane, very common as well here uh, in, in the Europe. And this other type of solution, when we he have here this like flat metal roof, uh, what happened is they try to weld uh, the pipe or the penetration, which is, which is all right, but the thing is this, this, this type of job implies uh, a lot of things. Having a specific uh, labor, someone who can do that job on site to weld the, the, the thing, the pipe and the penetration, and we all know if it's not done uh, correctly, eventually we'll have a, a lot of problems. Uh, and not just having a uh, discussion about the problems, uh, even the weld itself, um, when it's in compatibility with different materials, metal, sometimes it's not, it, the roof is metal, sometimes the penetration could be like a, a plastic type of penetration pipe. Uh, we all know you can all weld that uh, as well. Uh, again, you, we see here a bitumen um, roof as well, this type of tiles, very, very, very common situation. And when you, when you have here on the on the left, uh, again they try to do this this pitch pocket using this the same type of membrane or the asphalt that they applied on the roof. The thing is, it's not like uh, um, how can I say? Uh, as from the architectural point of view, or even like the design point of view, we all know this is it will be exposure. Sometimes it not going even seen this type of penetration, but it doesn't look all right as well. Um, I don't know if Alexandra can just uh, discuss a little bit more of the situation as well. Yeah, um, when we have a, a bitumen roof, the most common solution will be to, to try to, to seal the, um, the penetration with, with the same membrane used for on the roof. Uh, but if this is around uh, that, it, Okay, it's not so hard, um, but anyway, the, the membrane um, most probably will try, will start to shrink, shrink, and then um, leakage will be very, very probable. Um, but um, if we have a, an irregular profile on the roof, for example, an H beam or, or something with a more irregular shape, then it will be really very hard to do it with, with a membrane, with a bitumen membrane, uh, and achieve uh, an efficient sealage. Yeah. 
Uh, thanks, Alessandra. Uh, here we have another type of situation we brought to you, uh, not a specific on roof, but if you see here on the left, this type of uh, ballast, balustrade or parapet wall, this is a very common situation as well. Uh, um, in the end, you see there you don't have pretty much any space to how you're going to seal around this type of penetration. This type of columns is quite big. In this case, there are two, so e even harder uh, to seal this type of penetration. Again, the most common thing, if you see here on the bottom, um, on the bottom right, again, they try to come over uh, this type. When, when you have the gravel stones, and again, they use the pitched pockets. In this case, it will be sort of like a stainless steel situation, I think, or any type of metal situation. You see a lot of corrosion there. This is very common. And talking ag again about roof, um, this is will be exactly the first point that will deteriorate. So the membrane's all right, single ply membrane's all right, everything in the roof is all right, the material well applied. But when we talk specific about penetrations, this is exactly the point that will deteriorate first. So it, since it was completely exposed, we see there different materials, different compatibilities. So in the end, it is a really, really common issue that we face uh, pretty much every day when our clients approach us. This is the type of situation that they show us. Yes, this, these are really the weakest points on the roof. Uh, these are usually the first ones that will, will um, uh, bring leakage to the, to the roof. And uh, uh, usually when uh, someone start, starts to see a problem, they will use silicon or something similar to, to repair it, but this will last uh, only for a short period of time because the sealants don't have the capacity to, to work with, with the movements that we can uh, have on this type of, of details. Uh, so they, they will most probably break and are not a, a permanent solution. Absolutely, Alexandra. I think the, the important thing is we need to make sure that the same materials, the same quality that we are applying at the roof itself, it has to be transferred to this type of details, to this type of flashing. We cannot just like uh, um, shut uh, or close our minds to this type of situation. They, we, we know this is the weakest point uh, on, on the roof. So we have to come up with like very, very, very durable solutions so they can perform as well as the, the whole roof itself. Exactly. So um, today we decided to, to brought uh, a physical smooth shaper, which is a solution for sealing any type of penetrations on roof. In this, in this case, uh, flat roofs, but depending on the situation, it could be used in a pitched roof as, as well. Um, the important thing about this product is it comes in a membrane, as you see here. Uh, so just just yeah. let, allow me to make something clear that the, the main solution that we are presenting here today for sealing roof penetrations is, is the fuse stopper solution. Um, Inside the FIS stopper solution, we have now this new curve, uh, yeah. a FIS multi shaper that we are would like to highlight today. Um, that this is a, a very conformable curve. Okay, uh, and, uh, just to make clear that the solution is a FIS stopper, and a FIS multi shaper is an in, an innovation inside this, this solution. Yeah. It's a new curve. Yeah, thank you, Alexander. So uh, yeah, I would just like to. Um... Talk about a little more about this. So as Alexandra was saying, inside of stopper, we call it stopper solution, we have different solutions that will come over the, any type, any type of, of penetration in roofs and facades. But specifically today, we're going to talk about the multi shaper. This is, is a new solution. We will start in development this last year. A um, lot of studies, a lot of try to see compatibilities, so, try to come up with a solution that could fit to any side. We have uh, different solutions and we saw that in the market, the, this type of curbs that are, are really rigid. So you have to have a specific curb for a specific type of penetration with a specific si size for that, a specific diameter, if it's circular, I mean. Uh, but the multi-shaper, the most advantageous thing is you can 
curve or you can just mold to any type of situation you have. So you don't have to be stuck on a single solution. You can just uh, fit that to any configuration. We're going to come to mock, uh, we're going to discuss about this later on. So here are some composition, some advantages of the solution. Uh, it's universal, as I mentioned, you can adapt it. You can just use to any type of geometry and configuration. You see here uh, um, on the top, is they have circular, this more oval uh, situation as this other one, I mean, it's quite a, a weird shape, but sometimes th th this happen. So instead of having different solutions, you can just fit to a single uh, curve, the whole, uh, the whole ceiling of the penetration. Yeah, and uh, this, uh, just allow me to explain. This ca came up because the, the can, can you go back just one, one? Uh, yeah, uh, the fizz stopper, as you can see here on, on this picture, is is a solution to seal roof penetrations that works basically with a curve around the penetration, and is then filled with with um, a self leveling leveling sealant that is completely water, waterproof uh, in in ten minutes. Uh, uh, so it's very easy to install because you just adhere this curb to the roof and then you fill the, the curb with, with, with this sealant, okay? And if it rains in half an hour, it will be okay. It will be completely waterproof and it remains uh, flexible um, all along the, its, its lifetime. Uh, but on the past, we worked with, with some um, uh, rigid curbs. Uh, some standard dimensions that you have to dimension according with your penetration. You have to choose that curve for that penetration. Uh, and with the Fizz Multi Shaper, we have an universal curve that, that it's possible to shape to any penetration that you might have, and it's easily closed in one, one step with, with a clip. So that's the, the, the main advantage. We are replacing all these standard curves. Uh, with 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 an universal solution, but yeah, you will go further on that. Okay, thank you, Alexandra. So, talking more about the composition of the material, this is, is a polymer-based uh, material with an uh, inside aluminum mesh that allows to be very flexible and and moldable. So there is no logistic barriers, as I mentioned. It comes in like a, in a, in a single one meter membrane, but I will talk about more how can we supply it about this. Uh, so uh, the installation, it's very easy, very fast, it less than 10 minutes, we say. It's uh, resistant to the UVs uh, since uh, the composition or the, even the, the curb itself, but also the, the filler, the, the pouring filler that we're going to be inside. Uh, is very UV stable. So it's comparable to pretty much all type of membranes and materials that will be applied on roofs, TPO, PVC, uh, concrete, asphalt, uh, bituminin, single ply membranes. Um, it has no Vox uh, composition, so it's environmental friendly. Uh, again, uh, it's very versatile, so it's compared to most of the substrates in, in its perfect to fit to any element. This, this is the main advantage of this product. You can fit to any element. It comes in one meter, but what we can do is also add another membrane to it if it's a really big uh, penetration, and then you just can mold around it the way you want. Simple to handle. Uh, we're going to talk about later how it is installed, easy transportation, it, it permanently flexible. So uh, some, somehow you mess it, how you just, you need to curb it, you can always go back and mold it again how you want it. Uh, this is how it, we supplied, it's supplied in kits. The kits come in one, uh, three or five, um, one meter membrane. Uh, and also part of the, the kit uh, includes the clip. Once you curb the, the membrane, you just have to attach it a clip and that's it. Uh, as part of the kit, we also supply a sort of a measuring guide. What we did, it's based on, on our experience. We see a lot of uh, um, circular penetration and we include a guide that you just have to follow this guide through uh, for the most common circulars, diameters and penetration. Uh, for instance, if you have like a 50 millimeters diameter, you just, what the guides say, you just need to cut 
this one meter membrane at 30 centimeters and that's it. And this thing will assure that you have uh, the perfect and the necessary uh, space that you need to fulfill that penetration. If it's, if it's not, if it's a square or any type of uh, uh, penetration, you just can uh, mold around. This is a quick, quick and simple way that we uh, came up just to help you up um, with the size measuring the, the guide for it. Uh, here's something about the installation. I, I, I would like to invite Mar to talk about the installation, how simple it is. Yeah, I am. Uh, thank you, Jean. Um, yes, for the installation, as we've been, say, we've been saying, it's, it's really, really easy because it's really susceptible and moldable. So with our hands, we can uh, form uh, any shape uh, and it's, it's really easy. Um, first of all, we can see in the second, in the second um, step, uh, normally that's why uh, we add um, a measure guide. Uh, we need uh, 2.5 um, centimeters uh, of the distance between the penetration and the membrane of the curve. So um, with, with, uh, with this um, uh, solution, uh, we can we can assure uh, the penetration is completely zero. We can we can pass. Uh, thank you, John. You, you can pass the next one. No, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Yeah, and um, the first step is um, to seal the base of the penetration as well um, of the um, of the perimeter of the of the penetration. As you can see on on the back and. With, uh, normally we put two two lines of, of steel uh, in order to be more more careful and more safe. Uh, the penetration is going to be the sorry the ceiling is going to be averted, mm -hmm. and uh, the next uh, step is putting the clip on the on the curve when it's uh, completely closed. And after after all, we normally seal the the clip inside as well to be more safe and, and, and more sure that uh, the, the one piece next to uh, the next step is not going to pour all over the, the membrane. And the last step is just pouring the, the one piece sealant. The uh, one piece and the M1 is um, two of our products as well uh, with the, with the multi-shaper. So with all these steps, it's only four steps, it's really easy we have the complete solution done. Thank you, Mark. So I, I'd like to highlight here about the installation. Um, one thing, we use the M1 sealant uh, uh, to place around the curb, but we also use the M1 to prepare like the, the penetration. Uh, mm -hmm. Mar talk about this one, we use sort of like a spatula. This allows that once you fill with the poor sealant, uh, these materials will work very, very well. And also something specific about their clip, it's very easy to attach to it. And yeah. once we supply every, like one meter comes with like three clips, for instance. So what we can do is one single membrane you can use for three for penetrations, her. three penetrations, for instance, or depending how you want to. Yeah, just, just to summarize, so we cut and, and bend the curve uh, according to our needs. Then we adhere this, we prime the surface of the penetration and adhere the curve to the roof. And then we seal around the clip just to avoid any, any gap of the sealant that we will put inside later. And then we will fill the curve. Yeah, here, very, very easy, very fast yeah. application. If you see here in this uh, GIF, uh, so you just mold as you want, fill it. And for the M1 and then prepare the substrate and then fill the, the 1P uh, filler. And that's it. Very fast and very easy application. So uh, here are some application examples uh, we can just show to you. As we mentioned, um, all the common problems and how it, in here, so pretty much you have an idea how we can come over this. This is a very, very common situation. We have this on roofs. You can see here various uh, penetrations. We, you, you just use the curb. In this case, we made like in the circular shape, but it could be any shape, as I mentioned. Uh, in this case, uh, it was covered by this gravel stone. So it's, it's seamless. Uh, 
So it's perfect, it's pretty much perfect in this type of situation. Here, uh, more uh, the type of uh, indrusion replication and metal roofs, polycarbonates. You see there really huge penetrations on these pipes um, on the top right. Um, and you can, as we, as we see, we can just seal around and then as you want. This is very nice. Uh, we have a, a question here for James. Is it due to our types of surface, uh, Mar? Yeah, yeah. Um, the compatibility is the, it's, it's, it's very uh, average. So we can uh, add with uh, metal, with uh, wood, um, beton, but, uh, beton. Um, Concrete. Carbonate, yeah, it's, it's every, I think it's every, every surface. Yeah pretty, yeah, pretty much, pretty much every surface you can. Yeah, it, it will work on uh, PVC or GPO, single ply membranes, bitumen membranes, uh, all types of of metal roofs. The only exception will be kinda kinar roofs. Uh, it's, it's a particular uh, type of metal roofing, and that will be the only limitation that we, that we are aware of. Yeah, Mar, we also have a question here. Say, what what colors do you have? Uh, yeah, the, normally it's it's gray. Our what we supply, but uh, there there are more colors. We have black and uh, brown. Um, it's completely gray as well, and uh, even it can be paint. So in 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 that way, it's not going to be a problem to fix with with every. Situation. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, the most the most common in this case it would be the the gray color as we see here pretty much in all this application. But we can come up with uh, different colors as well. Yeah, yeah. The, but the the standard product is gray, uh, and uh, it is it is very easy to paint. And, and it, because for the, the the other colors quantities will be quite high, so most of the times that's not so so easy to to supply the other colors so uh, if you require a, a very specific color then the easy way to go will be to paint it with, with a standard uh, water-based paint uh, and, and the paint um, should be with uh, oil base to be more compatible with the compatible with the, with our membrane yeah, just one recommendation, it has to also be really UV stable since this yeah. most of the case will be a total exposure. That's that's the only recommendation we have, I think. Um, so here as the, the one of the examples that I show um, in the antenna in specific case, they have this uh, stitch pocket. You see there, we, we use the curb uh, very well applied, very easy. So in this case, in pretty much all the cases, what we recommend, you have to just previously remove the material that was applied. Uh, make sure the the substrate, the penetration is very clean um, for the, the next application, in this case, to apply the, the multi shaker. And that's it. Um, here, a uh, specific case um, for a vertical application. Um, sometimes we have this type of situation, not necessarily on roof, but we decide to brought to you this, this, this uh, application. The only thing in the pouring ceiling had to be replaced for the M1 ceiling, which is the one you use on the base of the curb. And that's it, you can just apply that as well. Yeah, John, um, may I um, say something? It's not only in vertical situations when the block is uh, over four uh, percent um, should be replaced the uh, one piece with the M1. Yeah, uh, and that's I think that that's also answered this question. James asking the ceiling doesn't leak uh, in the vertical position. No, it would not leak, James, because uh, as we mentioned. Um, we we replace it or the the ceiling for the M1, which is a, a more it's not a liquid base, so it, it will not leak at all. Yeah, it it, it will be a, um, a more um, thick sealant. It's not the same that we use for the horizontal applications that is self-leveling. 
it's, it's uh, uh, another sealant for vertical applications, but the function is, is the same and the composition is also the same. It's just the viscosity of it that yeah, is Yeah, it's, it's more viscous, yes, exactly. And here, here we sometimes we face this type of situation as well, uh, uh, just to make sure that you can apply as well on vertical or horizontal, uh, it, it doesn't matter, um, any type of penetration. And when you come up with this type of, of things, you just use a different ceiling and that's it. Uh, this is the first example we see here. Uh, and I think it's very, very nice how it, it was applied because it, it, you see there, it was very, very deteriorated, this subject. And since the membrane has like a, um, five centimeters high, it was even able to cover up like this, uh, this the top base of the balustrade. So in the end, it, it was quite nice. You see there, and it's very clean solution. Uh, Alexandra, I don't know if you want to bring something else, uh, something we forgot to mention here. But no, I don't think so. It's just uh, to, I can highlight some of the properties of the product that make it to, uh, very efficient for this type of application. It's it's permanent, permanently flexible, so it will um, absorb any movement that you might have on on the on the the penetration on the element uh, that is going through the roof. Um, it it will always remain flexible. It is completely waterproof after thirty minutes. So uh, that will not be a problem. Uh, it's completely UV resistant. It will also resist to any stagnated water that might be on the roof. Uh, so it's, it's, it will be really a permanent solution for, for sealing this type of details. Absolutely, absolutely, Alexandra. So as I mentioned, we, we have a huge portfolio when it comes to roof penetration itself. We specific decided to brought the mid shaper as a, as a new solution, as a new development of pieces. But on the, ne the next uh, um, sections and the upcoming weeks, uh, we all know we're going to discuss different products for very specific situations. I think it will be really interesting to have you all participate in, and be aware uh, on these common issues that we have and we face every day and how just come over that. So thank you uh, for all for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the chat. Um, I'm also available for um, any choir or any questions. Something very specific is even more technical. Um, I think it's important to mention our technical department had here by Alexandra. Uh, sometimes uh, the client come with a specific uh, um, situation. So they submit us like a, a picture or a drawing and then we can just send this how how to solve that. We, it's, we call it a technical submission, if it's really specific, but I, it, I, I don't think it's the case here, but just to be aware that we, we do this type of jobs. So thank you, thank you, Alexandra, thank you, Mark.